Let's say we wanted to find the area of this region here. Well, that's difficult to do because this is just a, a curve and we really can't find the area under a curve yet. We can only find the area of things like rectangles and triangles and circles and things. So we're going to use that, the fact that we know those areas, to estimate the area under the curve. So here if we draw in four rectangles like we've done, well then the area of the four rectangles certainly encompasses the area under the curve. It also gives us a little bit more than what we wanted, right? So there's, we, you know, this is an estimate. In pink we could see how much we're off by. We're getting too much area. But that's okay. We know it's an estimate, so let's, let's try and do it this way. So to find the area of those rectangles, we need to know the width of each rectangle and the height of each rectangle. Well, assuming the width of each rectangle is the same, we could figure out the width pretty easily. So if we have a total uh, width, a total length of 1, and we're splitting that up between four rectangles, well then each rectangle has a width of 1 fourth. So that means if we were to label these, this would be from 0 to 1 fourth, that's a width of 1 fourth, and then from 1 fourth to 2 fourths, and 2 fourths to 3 fourths, and then finally uh, 3 fourths to 4 fourths, but of course 4 fourths is just 1. So this makes sense. And then the height of each rectangle, well, that will be pretty easy. It will just be the, the f, uh, f of the, the, the x value, so f of 1 fourth. That, that was probably a confusing way to say it, but let's, let's take a look here. If we, uh, if we want the height of this rectangle, well, it's the same as the height of the function at when, when, the, when x is 1 fourth, right? Because the height of the rectangle shares shares the height of the function there. In fact, the rectangles were, I purposely drew them that way. So the top right corner, the height of the rectangle is the same as the height of the function. The height of the second rectangle is just f of 2 fourths. f of 3 fourths, the, the height of the third rectangle is the height of the function when x is 3 fourths, and then f of 1, or f of 4 fourths. So the, the, height is, the heights are going to be pretty easy, f of 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, and so on. I won't, take, I won't waste our time writing them out. And then the area is just going to be the height times the width. So the area of the first rectangle, for instance, is just going to be f of 1 fourth times the width, which is just simply 1 fourth. And this will be the area of the first rectangle. We can compute that, and then we add. Then we'll add the area of, so maybe I'll write plus the area of the second rectangle, which is f of 2 fourths times 2 fourths times 1 fourth and then we'd add the area of the third rectangle, so on. Uh, and this will, this will be our estimate. But what if, we wanted to, uh, what if we wanted to get a better estimate? So let me erase all that for now. Well, we could use more rectangles. And, and hopefully you can see that the error is going to be much less. Because if we... Uh, what's going on here? Oh, I'm, I hid that layer. So let me, let me bring this back for just a second here. Sorry about that. Sorry about wasting your time. But uh, so you can see if we use a, a lot of rectangles, then our error is much smaller. We get the total area that we were looking for, and then we only have these little tiny corners peeking out, that, and that's our error. So the more rectangles we use, the better our estimate. But that means we're going to have to do a lot of computing. Let's say we used 100 rectangles. Well, we're going to have to compute the area of 100 rectangles and then add up all of those areas. That's a, that's a lot to do. Even just adding up the areas, adding up a hundred numbers is going to be is going to be a task. And before we even get to that point, we have to compute all the areas. So we have to do height times width plus height times width plus height times width. So it's going to be a pain in the butt. But that's what the next video is going to be on. How can we sum up a lot of numbers all at once. And in fact, it will be just as easy to sum up a hundred numbers as it will to be to sum up a thousand as it will to sum up a million. And you'll see how that works in the next video. See you then.